I think graffiti writers in particular mm. have a lot of a lot of those skills that could like transition into this. Mm. More skills than they would think of, like from typography, like the way you build in your own fonts, letter forms, colours, so many things that could mm. transition into this new world, but but haven't yet. There's very few graffiti writers and people that I've seen cross over. I've done work with Cess, with Arrow and stuff, Goldie, mm. and like bringing people over to do it. But largely, it's, you know, it's an untapped. And I think it's just, that's what I would stress. The Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Street Killer Keller Podcast. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast. <laughs> Live and direct central London, essential as you need to be, could be, should be, want to be. Let me just check. Is it right? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct, central London or central as you need to be, should be, could be, wanna be. You don't need to be anywhere else. Fact, uh, big shout out to supporters, lovers, and haters. We adore you as well. Not that we've got time for the hating because there's nothing but love that's been passed through. The Television app free download, iPhone, Android for your sporting art, lots of new things popping off, especially for 2023. So hold on, <clears throat> hold on to your apps. It's going down. Um, we're talking AI, NFTs, crypto, creative stuff for 2023. Inside the house. We have a very multi-talented character. Um, one of the first uh, times of actually having someone like this on the show, where we're going to get into some deep, deep conversations on some technological fronts, but also the history and lineage of this character goes far beyond uh, the world of NFTs, cryptos, uh, ETH, and etc. We, we're talking to a guy that's working alongside Method Man, Goldie. We're talking about a man that is uh, trenched in drum and bass and uh, all the colourful aspects of the art and design world of it all. But there's just, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm literally skimming on the top. This is Spencer Viva La Vandal inside the place. How are you, Thank champion? you, man. Thank you. That was a good intro. I like that. Yeah, was, I mean, it was, it was it wasn't bad, was it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, the, for the first like few minutes, I was like, I, I, I'm going to have to reel this off really <laughs> delicately. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, we were having a chat, weren't we, about things just mm. before, trying mm. to go into, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've fallen into any one box. I think I've I've kept myself busy in a few different things. So I think that's what makes you an interesting prospect for a conversation. Um, big up Arrow, obviously. Yes, yeah, yeah. the Vandal crew. Um, interesting people. They they often keep themselves extremely humble. Uh, you're one of them characters that I think you just keep. So much lid on how much you work, and 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 we're going to get into this because I do feel like it's it's it's, oft, it's only too often that people excel in one thing, yeah, but when you're doing stuff in other areas, you often learn a hell of a lot. Well, as we were saying before, like, and I think coming from people like Goldie, we were talking about before of using your creativity, but not just excelling in one particular form, spreading yourself. And, you know, branching out into a lot of different things. And I think that's what I've done. I like, started in drum and bass, doing mm -hmm. flyers. Mm -hmm. When I was 16, at um, Design Asylum. So, yeah, you know, going from there, taking that, taking the inspiration from graffiti, from a lot of the people you see back here, mm -hmm. from streetwear labels, which we set up, and then into the NFT world mm -hmm. and the music world. You make it sound very casual. I mean, I think to a lot of my audience, and I, I will also confess to be slightly wet behind the ears on this, mm. is, um, is the idea of NFTs and how that world, how that world is constructed, how in your mind you're meant to uh, perceive it, how it's, how it's trusted, how, yeah. Yeah, how you install that trust so it's just a thing like, the internet or turning a light switch or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I think at the moment it's getting a lot of bad press. Obviously because of shady practices and things being, you know, mm. you see it a lot in the press. And I think generally anything 
especially in the widespread media, if they're telling you not to do something, you mm. should probably go in the other direction because mm. there's a good reason why they're trying to put people off. Do you think there's a reason for why they're putting people off NFTs? Yeah, yeah. Well, not just NFTs. I think... Crypto as a whole. Well, they, that's the first thing. There's like there's crypto over here, and then for me, there's Bitcoin here. Mm. And the two are completely different. They shouldn't be complicated. Like Explain Bitcoin, to me the difference of that. Yes. Again, I'm going yeah, completely yeah. lens here. Guys, we're following in this one together. Spencer's about to dive the fuck in. We're diving in. We're diving in. <laughs> so crypto is basically... As an umbrella, you put everything in there, all the other coins you'd see like Ethereum, Solana, artwork that's minted of apes and things like that, mm-hmm. you'd see saying, that for me would fall all under crypto. Okay. That is something to me that isn't isn't decentralised as such. What does well, decentralised mean? Well, decentralised is taking the power away from one person or entity. So Bitcoin will keep going regardless, is an ongoing thing, an ongoing mathematical equation that right. turns out rega- it doesn't need anyone's input, doesn't need any CEO, doesn't need like any a stock phase. exchange. But it doesn't even need that. It will carry on happening. To set, it's set to run over a certain course of time, no matter what. Why is that? Because it's a program and that's the way it okay. was programmed. And that's also where the value comes from. Because over that period of time, it becomes more and more rarer because there's only ever going to be 21 million of those coins minted. And this is what the theory, the theme, mm. blockchain comes into that, that and, and minting things. Well, yeah, you, a... you can mint on other platforms, but mm. with Bitcoin, you can't fuck with that. Like that's, that is what it is. It's yeah. on a course and it's set on that course and that's it. Which I think is the appealing thing, because if you look at where things go wrong, things go wrong when there's human interference. When you start Mm. getting egos and people that run companies, Mm. greed comes into it, Mm. factors like that, and that's Mm. where people get fucked over. They lose money, things like that. That can't happen. No, that's good. People can use it on exchanges, as we've seen recently, and... You know, that's where the problem comes in because to me, that's where it starts getting played like a normal banking system where Mm -hmm. you get people trying to... They try and mould it into that thing. Leveraging. Yeah. Like you would get with stock traders where they would say, say if you've got one Bitcoin, they'd do 10 times that and allow you to leverage it Mm -hmm. and bet on whether it's going to go higher or lower. Which to me is, you know, it's it's gambling. So it's, you know... To me, that that whole sort of section of it is wrong, and that's what's blown up recently as we're talking last week. Which is week. why there's a bitter kind of yeah. Which is why it's going down. For me, all of that shit needs to be cleared out to move yeah. forward. But yeah, that but that's decentralized. Like Bitcoin is decentralized in the sense that mm-hmm. if no one was around doing anything with it, it'd still be running. Mm-hmm. It doesn't need to. Ethereum is a proof of stake now. So, so Ethereum's another one, isn't it? Yeah. That's more associated with NFTs and artwork. Like, it, it wasn't the first chain to be doing it. It was going on before on Bitcoin. But, uh, yeah, Ethereum's definitely the most popular for that for that sort of thing. Bored apes, uh-huh. crypto punks, all of that stuff. OpenSea, all the things people are familiar with uh-huh. that I'm sure uh-huh. they're looking at and saying, why has someone paid... Yeah, yeah. A quarter of a million for a picture of a monkey and things well, like we'll that. Well, we'll definitely come to that bit in a bit. But, okay, so um, crypto. Mm-hmm. So what's, what's the... If the, if Bitcoin and Ethereum are there, what's what's crypto in the, the grand scheme of things? Crypto is everything else that isn't Bitcoin, basically. So it's all of these other coins. It's all of the other things. Unfortunately, it's a lot of scams. It's a lot of people using over-leveraged platforms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That stuff all falls into crypto. And they're, they're the things that I think give the whole space a lot of the time bad press. Do you mean like a lot of this over leveraging and yeah, just general lawlessness? Do you think that comes from a place where people don't care about the, the, the community, the culture, the, the thing that you're trying to create and they just see it as free money? Yeah, well, I think it's, you know, it's the Wild West a lot of yeah. it at the moment. Some of it is unregulated. And, you know, people, unfortunately, people have lost money and they have, and I think people have seen opportunities there to, mm. to dive in mm. and you know, take advantage. Yeah. But, you know, it's early. It's a very early thing. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of that stuff 
overshadows a lot of the positive things that can come out of it mm. and the freedom that artists can get mm. to sell their artwork and to have another passive income, which mm -hmm. is a big thing for... Say, I used to work as an animator for studios and things like that, creating animations. See, and you're just another thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Spencer, you're just... A, it's, trust me, this conversation is going to get very fun. Yeah. So you were animation? Yeah. You were that guy? Yeah. So Fantastic. We... Say you're working for a studio, you're doing a lot of animation, so that's a skill that you've had to learn over a lot of years, just yeah. as you would painting, right, whatever. Yeah. But unlike a lot of them other skills, say for illustration, I could then go home and I can illustrate something, I can sell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With animation and digital artwork, up until the point of NFTs, there's nothing you could do with that mm. outside of that. That's true. What could you do? So yeah. I was getting employed by companies to do the animation under their guidelines. They'd steer you, creative directors would tell you, you finish that project, you're done, you've gone home. You've invested a lot of time learning yeah. these skills yeah. for that company, yeah. essentially. But, but you, what you, don't you can't do yeah. anything with it after that. So what this did for me and for a lot of other people is you could then take them skills, go home, create something anything you wanted because no one's telling you what you can't do it's a free-for-all you can fucking any of the mad things you want to do i'm going to do it i'm going to mint it and put it up there and you can earn money off of that for for the first time you can earn money off of your digital skills which you know couldn't happen before it was a nice thing to have i don't think it was fully recognized as a as a skill set in the same way of other mm. creative methods were at all until now. Mm. And you see people are like, um, what's it called? The guy using Cinema 4D and programs mm. like that. Like They're hard to... Mm. It takes a long time to get your head around using them, let alone perfecting them to that level. So to see people getting paid for that is is a good thing that it's definitely is brought in. Yeah, for sure. It's another facet to this creative world. And again, this, is, this only heightens the deeper conversation we're going to have and the fact that you're on the show is that, you know, I think I think this audience here, my audience, our, us, we uh, we got a lot of skill sets. Yeah. Um, and, and when we have all these things, it's often, one thing can often be neglected or you can be really, really good at something like graph or, or breakdancing or something, you know what I mean? Like be really good at, oh, and in part-time I'm a, I don't know, I'm a... Uh, graphic designer or you know yeah. i'm a videographer or whatever it, it, it's hard to it's hard to find that one stop place where you can actually knock out all the yeah. things you're great at yeah but i don't know if you should i think like you always have to stay a little bit uncomfortable because i think that pushes you to do other things i don't think if you settle in that pocket and just do it like especially now now's the time now's not yeah. the time for comfort in a thing that's constantly evolving you've got to go with it yeah i'm talking more from a point of view of like the skills that are within nfts actually give you the opportunity to expand further on the on the all this all this skills all these skills yeah. you, you have well yeah for one i think i think what i wanted to chat to you about as well is i think graffiti writers in particular mm. have a lot of a lot of those skills that could like transition into this mm. more skills than they would think of like from typography like the way you're building your own fonts letter forms colors so many things that could mm. transition into this new world but but haven't yet there's very few graffiti writers and people that i've seen cross over i've done work with cess with arrow and stuff goldie mm. and like bringing people over to do it but largely it's you know it's an untapped and I think it's just, that's what I would stress. It's a thing, a world that a lot of writers sit at home now, there's no barrier to it. Mm. And that's the beautiful thing. They could sit at home now, have an idea, get it done. It hasn't even got to be done digitally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know people that are selling oil painting. They're doing oil paintings. Lots of photos. Just taking photos of it, but then it doubles up because they're selling the photos of their oil painting and you have the token, which is, that's the key bit. People will say, oh, well, it's just a JPEG. But it's not. Because if it's, the token is a timestamp, and that's where it comes from. That's the valuable thing. Mm -hmm. You could save a JPEG and say, oh, I own it. But then, you know, you got a JPEG, but you have no proof. You have no receipt, mm -hmm. as it is, of ownership. Mm -hmm. And that's where it is. And that's embedded on the blockchain. So if you did 100 of them, that's timestamped. 
and then people who own that own a piece of that. Mm-hmm. Which which art is all about. It's all about the yeah. timestamp of when someone did something. As to, and even that can be modified and rejigged and mm. made to, you know. Um, I think I think you're right, and this is a conversation that I also wanted to. I'm glad you're on, on the same page as we're on the same page because um, the debugging of why people wouldn't do this, yeah. I think, is a um, is the wider conversation. It, it, it appears to me that we've got a guess in the oh, fucking we'll room. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, a little fly in there for those who aren't uh, uh, watching and listening. The, the the debugging so far as a lot of the. A lot of the graffiti street art community, maybe more so the more uh, underground graffiti scene, this is something that is paid dues. It's something that actually should be inherent in uh, some sort of lifelong return for all of this hard work, you know what I yeah. mean? Yeah, no, yeah, I think that's the thing. It can. Here's a way where artists can get paid not only instantly through no middleman or anything like that. They mm. can do what they want, creative freedom, and they can get paid. But also, more importantly, on a lot of these platforms, you can have a 10% royalty that's ongoing. Mm. So you could do something now, you might not earn a fortune off of it, but say in five years' time, that thing becomes historically important mm. or people look back at it and say, fucking hell, there was this graph writer doing this back then. Yeah. And then that becomes like a a showpiece for the whole thing moving forward, you would still be getting 10% of that going on and on for the resales, mm. you know, which is unheard of. It's what, like being the king of something from some from a, doing a, you know, a, a, I don't know, like, I don't know, Wild Star, Star Wars, you know, all these hit legacy holders, they still live off that name now. You imagine if you were the first yeah. NFT dude to, yeah. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. It's still, it's still so early, don't it? It's not... People listening to that, I'd recommend at least doing your own research and going online. I can give you some links to good sites to look at mm. for to onboard people and you know getting more familiar with it. And um, yeah, I just think the rewards there, personally speaking, like the freedom it's given me to be more creative over the last year or two, is it's just insane. Well, we'll get into that for sure. Mm. I'm going to stick on the. Li- I'm literally going to stick on that. You know, holding hand yeah, of, yeah. of how to do shit because uh, it's fucking important, man. We'll get into mm. some techers stuff in due course. But for those that are starting fresh out out the traps and and they're they're like right. So what is it? So it's a JPEG. We take a photo. We can do whatever we want. That's the first step. Then we're from there. So from there, you can just choose where you want to upload it. Basically, if you want to, I would recommend doing artwork on Bitcoin personally because that's where a lot of my artwork has thrived and I feel it's where there's a community that embraces this sort of new new thing. So mm-hmm. especially with graphites, musicians coming on, like it hasn't just got to be artwork. No, no, not at all, yeah. There's a whole movement. Skrilla, who's a guy in America who's Flor- in Florida, he's a legend. producer. Yeah, legend, yeah. Produced Benny the Butcher's album, yeah, yeah. Pyrex Picasso. And... He is basically, along with a few other guys, started a music platform called Basement where you can go on and upload tracks. And the good thing with Bitcoin and Counterparty is, say you have an NFT on that level, or anyone that owns it, you can then ship them or send them out other tracks for free as token holders. So you could, say, release a whole EP. You'd release the first track and the artwork. Mm. Everybody buys that token. You do a set number of them. You then drop out a track a day or a track a week, whenever you wanted, and it would cost like a few pence. Well, almost like as if the NFT is a container and it just drops in. Exactly like that, yeah. So you'd have it living there. You could view it, you listen to it. It's something like you would on Spotify on your phone, but you own it. It's something that can grow in value, and you sell them. You sell them through, you set up a dispenser through there, and you sell them. And the money comes straight to you. And then money comes straight back. Yeah. No middleman. No one you got to run it through or things like that. Freedom. Like, you can just literally knock out anything you want. I'm not going to say everything's going to be a hit or everyone's going to... How would you break into that? So, if you... Okay. Actually, let me, let's rewind back a bit more. So, right. So, you're saying Bitcoin is the... Um, is the uh, 
the world in which you want to be dropping this thing. But what are the what are Personally. the por- what are the portals? What are the what like what do you type in a certain? For this is where it's slightly underground with Bitcoin. There's mainly it lives on Telegram groups. So there's okay. Telegram groups. I can drop you links for yeah, these as the well. Telegram crew, come on. Telegram, see, so is staying encrypted, yeah. so it's in there. And on Twitter, generally, all of these sort of things thrive on Twitter than they do Instagram. So it's a bit really? dead for it. Yeah. Um, which I think is a good thing because I think Instagram died really anyway. The yeah, way that they pay promotions and the yeah. fucking algorithm and all of this. For me, yeah. Instagram used to be great when I remember back in the day when, you know, when it first came out. Photos you could, and shit. But you could right? discover artists yeah. just through your timeline. Yeah. You'd find some graph writer in Spain or whatever that you'd never heard of no, and right. see it pop up on there. And it wasn't because it was programmed. It was just pure discovery on there that was Beautiful. interesting yeah, yeah. and it's gone so far from that now oh, it's it's just, come the, come the if you're not paying really. into that system on instagram then it's fuck whatever but, but the other thing is as well as i don't i still with instagram and the social media as a whole um where i'm troubled with it is is they want you to stay on the platform which means that you could have a really great idea Outside of those platforms, but they, I don't know, you, you just people just don't want to leave the platform. So you're not really gaining anything, even if you put something on there that you think you're going to get monetized, it's just not going to happen, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. people don't, they, they, all they care about is the addiction of the, of the, it's an addiction. It's just people that go on those things, they're, they're, they're tuned into that social media platform, and that's it, really. Yeah. That's true. I mean, there is still that element of it, even because even in the Telegram groups, like they're active, but it's definitely a different vibe. Yeah. So you get it's these not, links. You get these links to these. Um, yeah, join the Telegram groups. Yeah. I'll send out a few that we can add on under this or whatever. Yeah. Go and check it out, and you know, obviously, you have to you have to be an active part in the community and sort yeah. of you know you jump straight in, mm. and you know you're not going to be an overnight success. But it, as with anything, it takes time. But I would recommend jumping in and researching it and just putting things out there and starting to build that way. So building that way being that you jump on a Telegram group that would be from of a platform that does NFTs. Yeah, first off, jump into the Telegram group. There's a couple that I'll put links for. One's called Fake Rares, which is set up by Skrilla. Nice. Been running since 2021. Um, nice. I think he's moved... I say he's moved fake rares as a whole has done over $10 million as an independent thing. And that money's gone straight to the artists. That's amazing. There's no money going into anyone else's pockets. That's going straight out to the people that take part in it. That is so sick. Skrilla hold tight. Isn't it? Yeah. So I'd recommend joining fake rares. Then there's other auction houses. So if you've got artwork, physical artwork, that you want to sell, you can sell it for Bitcoin. And there's an auction site called Scarce City, uh, Scarce City. So they're based in New York. This guy called Chris that runs it. And they're amazing. I've, I've, I've used them multiple times this really? year. And they're opening, they're receptive. They Yeah, yeah. Chris is running more than open and they're more than happy. You have to submit your artwork and it go through a pay, like, you know, a process. But, yeah. um, you know, they, they sell a lot of stuff and they're there for the community. So you get paid in sats which mm-hmm. is a current Satoshi's, it's broken down. It's mm-hmm. essentially Bitcoin. And, um, yeah, and they run auctions for every couple of weeks. Really? Yeah. Cess, we sold one of his, couple of his paintings through there. So I got wow. Cess on board. Big up Cess, come yeah. on. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, it's, I'm, it's such an entertaining idea that this is a world that is constantly moving and aside from the money aspect, because you know that's that that like everything could often be hit, considered hit or miss, um, but it's more about it's 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 more about the belief system of it. And I'll, I'll come back to this because, and and I, this is the way I perceive it, ladies and gentlemen. You understand, as somebody that knows absolutely zero by zero, um, you turn the light switch on, the light comes on. You don't automatically think, "How did that happen?" It's just. It's a trust system that you definitely know the light's going to come on. If it doesn't, there's a problem. Yeah. And it's the same with money as a currency. You trust it. You know that the digits go up and down in your bank account. It's the same sort of principles. You've got to find the trust in this thing to understand its value. Well, that's the thing. People always say, 
what is any cryptocurrency worth? What's it worth? It's just a thing. How's it got any value? People don't realise like the fiat system, pounds and that, hasn't been backed by gold mm-hmm. since the 70s in this country. Mm-hmm. It is literally backed by faith. Yeah. Yeah. It's worth that because the government say it's worth that. Exactly. What one thing have we learned recently that the government can't be trusted in anything they fucking say. <laughs> so what's this so money why thing the for? Fuck yeah. Should I believe you that this money's worth that? You're literally saying it, so it's worth that. <laughs> you choose algorithms right now on me are going up and down. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll choose a fucking, you know, I'll choose an ongoing mathematical equation that runs without you lot. Yeah, yeah. That, that says says it has value because you mm. know if we're basing things off of trust then they haven't got one they haven't got one yeah so, and, 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 and yeah that's why there's this attempt in trying to derail what actually is a beautiful thing yeah with yeah exactly I mean if the media and everyone is saying mm. it's a bad thing and you shouldn't be doing it then you probably should be doing it mm. because they don't want the best for you they want the best for them and you yeah. know monetary gain they can't control certain aspects of it and they will control some aspects of it don't get me wrong like i think they will they are centralize a lot of it mm. which they already have right there are certain coins that will get centralized and you believe me next couple of years they'll be rolling out a digital dollar yeah yeah china will be rolling out their digital version that'll be on your app on your bank yeah it'll app, be to yeah. track people as well and they'll be able to track everything but that'd be deaded like mm. versions of what would be hugely um fruitful uh options of 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 trusted and what i mean is what i mean is they're gonna give you the high street version yeah, yeah. they're not gonna give you any it's just whatever benefits them yeah You've got to think about it. They've got to discredit it to a large degree so then they can bring in their own one. Yeah. They can be like, here's this idea. It was there. It was failed because of this, this, and this. But we're here for the rescue. We'll Don't say. worry, people. We're going to regulate we it. And here's our version of it. You can trust us. And then that'll be it. That'll be a transition. But they can't do that with Bitcoin because it's running on its own. Mm. So what I think, you know, and this is all just my opinion, but what I think what they do is they just make it really difficult for the average person to get hold of Bitcoin. Which is why conversations like this are super important. Yeah, yeah, because I I don't believe, not in my lifetime, there's been as an important thing as that come along mm. to empower things. You know, you only got to look out your window and see what's happening in the world today to realise power can get snatched off of just doing the everyday things. And the- yeah, and also things have got to change. Things have... Th- and, and normally with this unsettled, there's always a kickback to unsettled um, society. Yeah. I can't see... I mean, it's quite crippling at the moment, the financial situation. Without yeah. question, it's crippling. But, but I mean, like, I can't see further down the line. Yeah, it's which is gonna, depressing in yeah. itself. You know, and it is for a lot of people. Yeah. You're looking at it, and just as you say, like, for the events, it's like, fuck, where, where's the end of this road? Yeah. What does it even look like? Yeah, because I'm sure a lot of people looking at it thinking it's a fucking lot worse than it is now. When NFTs and crypto and and you know these, I the, think were, freedom yeah. of expression. I think and freedom of allowing people to express themselves in a way. And this is what I was saying to people. For what I feel like a lot of the things that we experienced when we were younger creatively that may have inspired people to go in certain directions mm. becoming more and more scarce. Like even going out, nightclubs, mm. places like that that mm. you go to. If you're coming up now, all these younger guys, what's going to inspire them to create mm. the next thing? Like where's... The next cultural wave, the next shift. Because where are you getting that mm. from? Even if you go to record labels and they say, oh, we've got this sound, that's got to fit into a particular box, isn't mm. it? Let's be honest. And you don't make any money anyway. You put the record out and it's... You know what I mean? Yeah, but the, the, the label are going to sit there and decide what is and isn't suiting what they're going to put out. Mm. So that's not freedom. That's no, not, not. That's, that's not... That's not who new sounds are going to be broken that mm. way, are they? Because no. that's a boardroom of older people deciding what should and shouldn't... That's some gatekeeper shit yeah, yeah, that's yeah, going to yeah. direct it. This doesn't need that. And that's no. why I think if people can go on, they can make a few quid to pay their rent or whatever, that's then going to get them sitting back and thinking, fuck, yeah. I could make the next... You know, it's going to inspire that creativity. Yeah. I can do this without the system. And then that will inspire a lot more exciting things that I think you just won't get. That's the system. 
Yeah, there's there's this running kind of commentary on a lot, not just this podcast, a lot of podcasts where it's like they always cite eras and times have happened that have happened because of if it wasn't for the record store, then we wouldn't have this. If it wasn't yeah. for vinyl, then we wouldn't have that. And and all these kind of real moments of um, creative, uh, uh, com- yeah, community. You know, yeah. record stores were a community. Like, yeah. Can't deny that this NFT culture is that new community. Yeah, it is. It is. It's got that. You're right. It's got that sort of vibe to it. And I've been to a few meetups and stuff at galleries and stuff. And it's, it's got that sort of vibe. Like when I was younger, like we used, to, I used to go with my older brother who was a graph writer into drum and bass and stuff. And you know, we go up, we go to Black Market Records, go to Unity, mm. Beat Street, go to Mash, mm. and go to Hold places. Tight mash. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> places like that, and you yeah. go hang out and you'd see mm. and experience all of those things. And it was like, mm. you know, you can't some of them things. You know, I don't want to go on about the old times. Oh, yeah, no, no, like right. No, no, I get it. But do you think? Um, do you think to get to this point where you are now, there's a lot of past narratives that you, you know, these 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 times that you went through where you could kind of in part kind of forecast how communities move and how NFT or do you feel like there's this is a whole completely different um yeah no I definitely think there are similarities yeah yeah yeah, definitely and yeah you know I've said I've done a lot of Twitter spaces and that talking with the guys and Mm. and speaking about this but yeah there, there definitely is and I think once people jump over into that community, mm. people listen to that and that they see similarities. Really? Mm. Okay, so right back to the back to the, the the subject of the creative stuff. Yeah. Because now we're talking about these communities, uh, Telegram, Twitter, etc. Right. Now we've we've established that this is an awesome creative outlet. But meanwhile, um, us creatives, we're we're constantly evolving in real life. Yeah. Ideas. Chipping away at designing whatever it is we're doing, going out painting or, you know, in a studio recording. Like, this is, this suddenly becomes like a double life, doesn't it? Yeah. A double life of community and a double life of uh, cutting your chops and yeah. coming up with ideas. Yeah. Like, how much time do you have to spend on, on, before even dropping an NFT? How much time do you have to spend on these places? Well, I spent probably a year just just sort of getting my head around it and being in it, not making any money in a year. But then I had other creative things I was doing. Like I was working for Airwell Cool J at the time. Casual. Casual wow. drop drop. That's but, um, son. Which came about in the lockdown. His, um, his head of PR and that is she woman. She contacted me through Instagram as much as I hate it. Fucking sick. And... Um, Said basically, I'd done a, d- a design. I can't say too much because that's signing non disclosure because yeah. some of the things I've Trees done. Please manage business. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't, um, <laughs> they haven't released yet. But he was just going through the process of getting Rock the Bells because you remember Rock the Bells used to be a, um, a gig, didn't it? Yeah. Out in the States. But he, LL, didn't own it. So he took him to court to get the name and then set up Rock the Bells. As Which is why it's blown up right now, and because yeah. he's owning it, and I fucking love that. Not only that, like I never realised it, it. Obviously, Airwell was fundamental in setting that up, but he also got a lot of founding hip hop guys to back that up. Big Big Daddy Kane, Run DMC, all heavily invested in it when it set up. So it wasn't just him. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. So, you know, at that moment in time when I was contacted by them, and then I was doing product design and stuff to start with. Product design for who? For LL's company. Really? For, yeah. So it was, it was, you were already doing that? Yeah, yeah. That was oh, before. Hey, 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 hey. But you know, that. I mean, that was a special thing in itself. Drawing. Yeah. It's one thing when you're sitting down and you're drawing something and you're thinking, it's going to get sent to, I don't know who, you're going to get it signed off by someone. But knowing that you've got LL Cool J on the other end of this line that you're sending it to is something different, especially for a kid that grew up. You know, my, my yeah. brother used to have LL vinyls and that on the wall and stuff, so he's saying I've grown up around. I'm saying it's like a basic podcast, my friend. You are, yeah. you're, you're very lucky right now to be in here with, with Spencer and having a good old chat. Uh, LL Cool J, okay. Um, and, of course, we can't, you know, 
yeah, indulge in, in this because obviously it's, it's, it's no. secret scrolls. But I think there are some <clears throat> interesting things I learned from working with that whole team. Was um, there was one point I was doing a design and um, I put on there old school, referring to old school hip hop, mm. and they messed around. They were like, "You can't be like Todd. Yeah, well, like, you can't put that on there." Really? And then he explained why, and uh, it was obviously a valid point. It was coming from him, but. He was saying, like, if you say you took rock and roll, he was saying there's a tendency to the older hip hop music to put put them in this box and call them old school, like almost throwing them in the trash. You're old school, you're irrelevant. It's like you're old, but he was like, if you're in rock and roll or other genres of music, you're classic. So you're classical. So he was like, he was trying to basically saying you should not refer to this as old school. This is classic hip hop. Okay, I like in that. In the same way, yeah. Bon Jovi. Yeah. You wouldn't turn around Bon Jovi and go, "Now nah, you, like oh, that's old. That's no, no, like no. some it's dead classic. thing." Yeah, that's, yeah. No, that's classic. So he's like, "Why can't these hip hop people that came in and founded it? It's classic. Their title needs to be slightly more fitting. Like, no, it's love classic. that shit. It's not old school. Yeah, yeah, I love that." So, yeah, from there on, I was like, okay. But things like NFTs and stuff, that in itself, it, first of all, um, it makes you more relevant than you can possibly ever, class or no class. It's like LL Cool J suddenly ha having Rock the Bells as a, as a cultural platform, as a, an event, as him doing NFTs as the rapper and actor. Like... This, they couldn't be anyone more up front. And, and furthermore, you're propelling yourself into the future, right? Yeah. I mean, I haven't spoke to... Well, I have spoke to them a bit about NFTs. They're not... I'm just as an yeah, example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they example. did, yeah. Because we've got know. plenty of other examples who are actually doing that sort of thing. Yeah, but, yeah. But, you know, to be so future forward into coming into a sphere like NFTs, you've got to have your finger on the pulse. Like, it's... Mm. And, and like you say... I don't really see many rock and roll guys doing that too much. You know what I mean? No, I don't really see them. So maybe the maybe the 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 fundamentals of of hip hop still stand, and that is um, from the time MPCs were were invented, they were using them. Yeah. From the moment Ableton came out, they were using it. From the moment yeah. it was, you know. I, I think there are things that cross. I I think for me as well, it's a slightly rebellious fuck the system mm. type vibe to it, mm. which definitely appeals when you compare it to graph, hip hop and the other things. It's about wanting to not be in that system, especially when that system's set up at the moment to fuck people over. Mm. That, um, I'm not saying it's perfect, it's not going to make, but I feel that it's better than a lot of current systems mm. that we've got there. And I think it's something that's evolving, that it's going to, you get in now early enough you could read the benefits later on. Okay, so let's get into a character like Goldie. Big up Goldie. Very, yes. You know, very close acquaintance of mine. Good guy, good peoples. Um, been on the podcast as well. Hold tight. Um, Goldie. <laughs> Goldie, Goldie, Goldie. Yeah. So uh, multifaceted. Label owner, original club night owner, graffiti writer. Early adoptee of hip-hop, went into drum and bass. Actor, you know, Yo gangster, yo yoga. He's a lot. He's a busy guy, isn't he? Exhibition space or him. You yeah. know, you know yeah, 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 the gallery. Stuff. How do you what what would you and I know this has happened, right, but what would you put in, in a in an NFT? What would be like your ideal NFT for him and you know, as a as a thing that constantly gets replenished with new content in an NFT? What well, how far can you go with a character like Goldie? Well, we did our first one. Our first one we did was we took it back to Goldie sent me a bunch of his outlines from his original pieces going back and like he had some crazy and he had uh, one that was love that said love as an outline which he particularly liked doing. So I said we come up with the idea of basically taking the love, putting it into a three D environment, having it dipped in chrome with a white surface, having this thing spinning around, and you're going around it, and in the reflection, which is Goldie's idea, it's like, let's have it spin, and you see him in the reflection of the crow. I haven't shown you this, have I? No. No, well, I'll show you after this. Yo! Um, <coughs> X 
exclusive. So we did that, but then we did a few other ones. So we took a few of his other outlines, obviously using his tracks from Metalheads, Roughage Crew tracks. And yeah, did, I think they were like three minute NST, so they were quite long. Yeah. And I think they were unlike other ones. This was like a year ago we did them. So, wow, pretty early on. We did another one as well. It was taking one of his abstract paintings in a cube form, spinning it round. Mm-hmm. That was reacting to the music. So there's music and the soundtrack of the, the, the animation that's going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it had to go hand in hand. Yeah, it did, yeah. Didn't it? It was... But, yeah, we did four of them in total on the foundation. <coughs> and how many out of the four were made? Well, they were one of ones. Wow. So, yeah, we didn't do a whole series. We are working on other things that we're going to do sort of when the time's right. Yeah. But they were more exclusive. So, yeah, they got bought up. Um, but this all seems to be quite tame. Like, and I, you know, I fucking love to. I mean, I know this does take a lot of work and a lot of, you know, yeah. but 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 when you think of like what's what's out there for NFTs and what you can do, and I mean, it's just it's crazy to think about. It's limitless, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, and this was even though we dropped it a year ago. Me and Goldie were working on that for probably like half a year before that. I don't doubt it. So things were like yeah. early. Mm. You know, we had meetings with certain people. We went to try and find out because we were trying to, you know, figure out what path to go with it. Mm. So the things with Bitcoin NFTs, we weren't even really onto that then. So, you know, there's there's other paths we were exploring at mm. that time. So, yeah, it's it's far from over. But, yeah, I think it's, it's limitless with what you could do with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the whole idea of Goldie having an NFT is... It just seems so fitting because he's just such a dynamic character. Yeah, he's a pioneer as well. He's, you know, it's in his nature to be breaking ground and new creativity. I think, as someone from Britain, of all the people that I've worked with, and I said this to you before, I've worked with a lot of US artists, of Method Man and Elwell, other Wu-Tang people, and... This like obviously that's special because you know I'm 40, so I grew mm. up listening to a lot of US hip hop mm. in the nineties in particular that you know was the soundtrack to to Everything. my life. Yeah. Then you know I still <laughs> listened and dressed the fucking same as I did in the nineties. Yeah, it hasn't yeah, yeah, really yeah. changed. Me too, bro. <laughs> but um, you know I haven't had to worry about that. But for me, working with Goldie was there yeah. was something more special about it because I spent my twenties going to you know Metalhead Sunday sessions doing them things, you know, so Blue Note mm. and all of that. Like, there was an added level to it. Mm. And I think the fact that he spread himself across so many things, getting into the Tats crew, yeah. in a, you know, people don't understand. Oh, like, God, how the yeah. fuck do you even do that yeah, 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 in yeah, a yeah. time? There was no social media or anything. Like, you yeah. had to be about, not only be about, to yeah. get international to, just to yeah. get to meet these people getting in there and did you watch his documentary yeah the documentary sky on sky yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. crazy it's i beautiful. mean that it was great yeah but you know breaking down that whole journey and you realize how many other things he's gotten off to i think is inspiring and just to show people that you know mm. right creatively you can excel in one field but that doesn't mean that that has to be your only thing that you do you can cross mm. over and don't limit yourself to that I think he. I think he embodies that. I mean, he, yeah. Goldie is. He gets nothing but flowers on this on this show, and he knows it too. He's just. He's just. He's. He's the benchmark. He's like um, an okay sign, mm. of like, well, yeah, you can do that too, you know. And and regardless of uh, which direction, it, it just feels to me that he 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 moves in a way that, f- from a b boy point of view, yeah, yeah, is always correct. Yeah, d- d- you know how he gets. It, I don't care. He's like he's fucking nice. Goldie, he's, he's alive and well and he's doing Goldie. Yeah. It's all, that's all that matters, you know? Yeah, no, that's true, man. That's true. Yeah. But then, you know, like, I've been fortunate enough to be friends with and worked with people that have pushed me that way as well, like Arrow and the whole way. Mm. He operates and moves and just wants to... There's a guy that won't settle one, like, could comfortably fit in a pocket mm. and completely excel and become the best at it. But instead constantly tries to do something else even from mm. like week to week won't just do that no mm-hmm. gonna go on and do this want to mm-hmm. go and do this mm-hmm. and it's that thing of 
keeping yourself uncomfortable mm. to push yourself to do other things that then I find that and I try and do that anytime I feel too comfortable in a pocket I think well I've got to go mm. I've got to try and do something else yeah we should we should because this is where we actually met Properly for the first time, actually. At Arrow Show, uh, yeah. Arrow Show. So Arrow had an exhibition, uh, uh, The Streets Want Blood, part two, yeah. um, down in Hove. And we yeah, had this beautiful moment of uh, coming in, getting a QR code for a special app, and you go up to this these pieces that, again, you know, Arrow excels in, these, these really dynamically created pieces that you know where the, the frame isn't a the frame there's something coming yeah. off the frame and is it you know yeah, an inside like of these that. pieces that they, they just look they're so well crafted and then you put your phone up against it and all of a sudden nft music soundtrack the whole thing's moving in front of your very eyes and yeah yeah it's just incredible and you were instrumental as, as part of making this collaboration come together right yeah yeah i did the animations i think you messaged me like a few weeks before saying we're just going to do one it turned into like 11 of them yeah, yeah. then we animated the side of that bentley as well incredible coming in there yeah. that he painted he's done up a bentley same thing applied right yeah you scan the car the door of the bentley and it came alive yeah and animated but that must have been yeah. a trip to just a, a guy that is just so hell bent on moving the scene forward and you're just yeah. like yeah i have a bit of that <laughs> yeah well it's very really like we've been working together probably for like 10 years probably more than that now i think when we started viva the vandal and then i messaged him to to use his b-boy design do you remember the yeah, b-boy yeah, design the kind of yeah. Thing, yeah the first one that was like red and uh turquoise mm -hmm. blue like i think it's a great design love it simplicity of it and it stands out and you know it's just it's chunky great. and yeah fucking... man it's a great b-boy design so I contacted him about using that as a T-shirt design and, yeah, that must have been like 10 years ago. Wow. And then lots of other things spiral from there. Like Arrow introduced me to Sess and then me and Sess started doing loads of things and then Sess introduced me to Goldie. So it's like the things tap on from there to there. Right? Yeah, how much of that do you feel is somebody in this world that I think you're kind of... You're laying the bricks as you're walking. <laughs> just making it up. Yeah, you're going, just kind of, you know, over here, I'm going over here, I'm going to yeah, do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, as I said at the top of the show, and we haven't even touched on, like, you, you, the history in, in drum and bass and art designs and all these other yeah. facets. I mean, you mentioned you mentioned LL Cool J as just one dynamic and world. It just, just feels like you're constantly in the right place at the right time, Spence. Well, I think <laughs> people say that, and like, I've met other people, and they've been like, oh, fuck, like, how did this happen? And But, but it's from staying busy. Mm. It's like my my output of work, I think, can't be... Like, I fucking put a lot of work out. Mm. And it's because of them things that these other things happen. Yeah, yeah. Like, LL Cool J, his publicist or someone saw something that I'd put out, which at the time... I thought it was a waste of time. Like, I was kind of gutted and I thought, fuck. Like, you know, you do some things and you put them out and in your yeah. mind you think, this, so what was this, it? this is great. I can't say exactly what it was because I designed a product for him and then I signed a non-disclosure for that. But it was a design for something that I'd put out and she saw it on Instagram and then she contacted me and was like, this would be cool. I'd work for LL. Would you like to speak to us? And then like a week later, I was on a Zoom call with all of them. But it's because of the thing that I'd put out where yeah. I was relentlessly trying to put work out, which at the time I was kind of disappointed and hadn't done that well, mm -hmm. that led to that. It's the same thing with Method Man as well. I was doing loads of designs at the time, um, just pumping out old school hip hop sort of logos, things like that. I started working for a company in Staten Island called um, NY Minute, New York Minute. And this guy was, he was friends with J.D. Kiss and a bunch of other people. Mm -hmm. So I did a picture of J.D. Kiss after the verses. Do you remember when J.D. Yeah. Kiss did the verses of fucking body, Battered, body, body, <laughs> body bagged them. Did that. But afterwards, uh, J.D. Kiss went down and did the Kobe Bryant trophy pose with the verses. Whoa, whoa, thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So the guy was with him backstage. He contacted me. He sent me the picture of it and he said, can you draw this picture of J.D. Kiss? with the Versus trophy real quick and we use it as a design and give it to... So I said, yeah, so I did that. 
And um, it turns out the guy who runs that company was grew up with Method Man in Staten Island. And they were starting a few other companies together that Meth was starting up his mm. athletics company because Method Man, since his 40s, has been mad into in the gym. Like He's all about that life now. Mm. So he wanted to start up this athletics company and then he started up to Cal as a weed brand. So he had people doing that. So his guy who was running that with him then contacted me. Wow. But then they see that it's... But it was about staying busy. Like, if I wasn't doing... At that time, I was doing them designs for them guys in New York for, fuck, like, 50, 100 quid. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. a lot of people would have looked at that. Some of these designs I was drawing for a few days. Yeah. People would have looked at it and gone, fuck, I'm not doing that. Mm. Like, that's not worth it. Yeah. But I was... I was just about smashing out as much work as I could. And sharpening your tools, just keeping busy. and uh, Everything you do, like you draw and you do, you're getting better. Yeah. So it's not like it's a waste of time. You can't view everything financially as because no, it kills kills creativity. And I think yeah. it just leads down a path that, you know, it, which is hard to do because i got a mortgage, I've got two kids, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, you've got to try and validate things. bills, yeah. like you've got to stay busy in a way that makes money, but. You know, through all the things that people look at and go, how did you end up with that? You know, I think you create your own luck, that whole thing, mm. isn't it? And curiosity, the interest, again, being interested in yeah. things that to, to the average person is just a, it's, it's quite a mundane have to do kind of job. Where's my money kind of thing? It's like, yeah. well, actually, I'm doing this because I'm curious. And that's, I think, the thing as well of how, how you come across and how... I think from from we were saying when I worked at sixteen years old in the drum and bass thing with design assigned and places like that, I'd learned how to like if you're passionate about something and you're in that industry, people can tell because mm. I, I could have got in these situations and fucked it up if you come across wrong. Mm. Like, it's not like these people haven't got thousands of people queuing up waiting to do work from them in New York yeah. or wherever else, so you can get yourself to a position. But you can easily fuck that up if it comes across that you're not passionate and actually about it. So it's, you know, all these people I work with now, I work with because I've built up a good relationship with them. Mm. Because purely because, you, you know, if you're passionate about it, people can tell. They can, can't they? Yeah. You've got to be genuine about it. And this, just to continue this, the, 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 the relevance of this podcast to you guys out there is to get, an understanding that anything is possible no matter what you're doing in whatever field of art and creativity you could be podcaster you could be a beatboxer graph writer breakdancer mc whatever it's like it's it's more about outside of all of that taking hold of great opportunities yeah and utilizing your skill sets and just being curious isn't it yeah 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 definitely you've got to yeah but then i think that's as well comes from you can get that sort of direction from even things like people you hang around with and stuff mm. like that. Like, do you believe in that sort of energy? It's, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I would have been a lot further along. In you know, in my twenties, I wasted a lot of time just doing a lot of negative stuff and shit mm. like that. And I think I would have been further along. But I think you know, people take a bit of time to grow up. I think that's the mm. same story, I'm sure, with a lot mm. of people. Like, mm. it's till you hit about 30 and you start to grow up. I had a lot of opportunities that I fucked up prior to starting to take my opportunities mm. when I was, like, probably 30 onwards. Before that, like, I had a lot of opportunities, but, I, you know, I didn't make the most of them. That happens too, yeah. yeah. Especially in this this world we're living in now, there's a lot of negativity, a lot of distrust, there's a lot of... Um, cynicism there's a lot of re good reason to feel a particular way about a certain thing that's way out of your control and you let that infiltrate your day-to-day -day life and way of thinking you know it's there's better ways to start your day than the news there's better ways yeah to, it's yeah. all that sort of stuff isn't it yeah there is and I, you know that can infiltrate you so much like, i try not to for one i try not to look at the news but yeah. I, i'm still a sucker for tracking things like prices of of Bitcoin and stuff yeah, like that. And yeah. if you look at it and then other events going on, you mm. think, oh, God. But, you know, you have to tune out. Mm. We'll try to tune out as much as possible. So before we wrap this, because I, I, 
I do feel like it's time for you guys to get activated and stuck. Right, so I'm going to get the links off you. We're going to put them down on the bottom uh, for Telegram, etc. Yeah. And, and these are all relatively like easy entry crash course kind yeah, of. Yeah, the Telegram group, the links that I give you, you can literally jump in. And the good thing is everybody is so helpful in mm. there. So if you jump in and just say, look, I'm new to this. I want to start creating artwork on here. People will just step up to help you out. Mm -hmm. And I'll put, there's another guy, he's called Robot Loves Coffee. And he's set up a whole website just with video tutorials. So literally step by step, talk you through it. Wow, see? That is so sick. Show, shout out to Robot Loves yeah. Coffee. He's, and it's amazing. It literally breaks it down into what, what can be a little bit long-winded, but he explains it so well. Uh, so I'll put the link to that and you can set that up and this is an eight you can be set up and ready to go in like half an hour so oh my god really that simple yep yeah, yep yeah. and and again just to just to go back on the NFT thing yeah. this is a a, a free world of you can put anything within these NFTs you want you can you can build yeah on them and make them your own yeah yeah there's anything I would I would strongly encourage musicians as well to to get on board of doing this. Anything people are doing, even if they've got beats that they've got laying around, mm. put things together, this is a perfect time. People might think because things are down now, it's not worth fucking with. I think the opposite. I think because things are down is the good time to be building. Jump on it. Yeah. Now you build. What's your... Uh, what's your um... Yeah, actually, that's a good question. Actually. What's your favourite? What's your most impressive uh, NFT you've seen where you've, you know, you've had to tip your hat off to a, a particular artist that has really gone the distance and encapsulated every single aspect of their creative output? God, fucking hell! I bet there's a few in there. I don't know. Really? Um, Is that still to be seen? Yeah, I don't know. Off the top of my head, that's a tough one, man. You put me on the spot there. Sounds right. Know. Even though yeah. doing a dragon's den here. I'm not sure. <laughs> I wouldn't. Like, there's a lot. of... Good people doing things that are in fake rares group, I'd suggest joining in that and nice. checking everyone out. Yeah. Because there's a diversity of people. There's people that are like hand painting every single element of it and then mm. sending the physicals. There's people who are doing things augmented reality. So they're building these things in 3D and then you can view them and they come up. There's people who are doing straightforward animations, just normal flat illustrators, like literally anything. So it's all... Anything possible? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, you know, it's something people should jump into. Oh, and also, without question, we've got big up uh, F um, Graffiti Kings. Uh, yes. Of course, we can yes. not leave this podcast with because I know he's he very much mutual friends and somebody that you would definitely uh, Definitely, by, I would yeah. say it wasn't fair. Well, it was... Well, can I say his real name on here? Yeah, sure I just can. have, yeah. <laughs> yeah just, uh, <laughs> it was um, Graffiti Kings who I had a phone call with a while back now who called me up to explain basically what NFTs were going to be and what the importance of them and what I should be doing for it. And it was from that point onwards that he really convinced me because he's passionate and mm. he knows, he knows, he knows what he's doing. About it. Yeah. Like he's you know been into this before anyone else I could think of, mm -hmm. especially in this country. He's been in there. And he was building a community for so long before which at the time to me didn't make a lot of sense because i was like well how are you gonna earn money off of this now so you're not so wait this is about building mm. building the community i couldn't wrap my head around that to start with but yeah he was just further ahead of the game mm. and still is so yeah shout out to graffiti kings because mm. yeah they were out there doing it be way before i was mm -hmm. mm. and i guess this is people like yourself people like uh, fdc uh, graffiti kings that does pass on this information it allows yeah. growth and people to get a kind of more detailed understanding of this stuff and i feel i certainly feel like yeah okay well where do we begin yeah so yeah it's fantastic expensive absolute legend thank you so much that's all right thanks fruit. for having me yeah it's been good in it yeah ah keeping it moving like that the future is bright the future is the killer killer podcast spencer viva la vandal um Big shout out to Arrow, big shout out to Goldie, big shout out to Hello Cool J, dare I shout him out, big shout out to Method Man and everybody else that is working alongside this total nutter G. Um, uh, sharing is caring, so you're going to tell a friend to tell a friend, you know, it's important, we've got to keep this thing moving. Um, we're doing it for you, we're doing it for street culture, this is for the community and the scene and the vibe, all right? Um, don't talk to anyone I wouldn't, all right? Uh, crime don't pay, neither do they. You stay lucky, people. Take care of yourselves, peace. Peace. <laughs>
Hey. Oh, so, man. <laughs>